name is Nico Vitopoulos. I'm a rising sophomore at Princeton University studying molecular biology. And I was fortunate enough to join Dr. Steven Chigaris as he went to Milan, Italy to see uh, Dr. Antonio Tuesca perform uh, his robotic nipple sparing mastectomy, a procedure that's not currently available in the United States. Uh, I will be conducting um, the data processing on the study as the research coordinator and we are excited to see this procedure moving forward and the progress that it takes as it becomes widespread in the United States. We are fortunate today to have uh, Dr. Antonio Tuesca in Milan and Dr. Steven Chigaris here in New Jersey to give us more insight into this robotic nipple sparing mastectomy uh, advanced procedure as they both develop it further both in Italy and here in the United States. Hello, my name is Stephen Arthur Chigaris, MD, and I'm a board certified general laparoscopic and breast surgeon. And with this experience, what's your relation now with Dr. Tuesca and this new procedure? Um, interestingly, now that this new procedure has come along combining mastectomy with robotic surgery, Dr. Tuesca invited me to come to Italy, observe him, and learn how to perform the procedure so that I could come back here to the United States and begin performing it here. Perfect. So now we are going to call in with Dr. Tuesca uh, from Milan in his uh, current practice to get some more insight into his side of the initial development of the procedure and um, his research into the procedure itself. Okay. <laughs> I'm Dr. Antonio Toesca. So as the first surgeon to perform a robotic nipple sparing mastectomy, how did you initially develop this procedure? As a general surgeon, I was used to perform a, a laparoscopic mini-invasive surgery with the aim to reduce the scars, postoperative complications, and postoperative pain. But when I decided to, uh, in 2006 uh, to uh, dedicate my life to breast cancer surgery, I had to abandon this type of concept because at the time, minimally, minimally invasive approach was not applied to breast cancer surgery. Uh, but uh, during the time in uh, 2014, after two years of uh, simulation and after two years of uh, uh, planning of this uh, new operation, thanks to the robotic mini invasive surgery availability, the step towards the robotic mini invasive mastectomy was then uh, uh, accomplished in 2014. That's amazing. And so, uh, with this procedure, what kind of uh, progress have you seen with its development since your initial publication in 2014? in terms of trials and successes? Yes, this is a very important question. At the beginning, uh, in uh, 2014, uh, when uh, we started with this new procedure for the first time, the operation was longer. But today, this operation can be performed in three hours and a half, or maybe four, uh, considering also the reconstruction time of the operation. Uh, furthermore, at the uh, European Institute of Oncology, where I work in uh, Milan, uh, we are conducting a randomized controlled trial to compare classical open uh, uh, mastectomy to robotic mastectomy. The primary endpoint of this study is uh, the patient satisfaction, which is the center of the question. The preliminary results regarding the postoperative outcome are pretty ready and uh, encourage the spread of this mini-invasive approach in the commune practice. Uh, European and American researchers, like us, I have to say, uh, are working to make this opportunity available for everyone. And uh, this is the reason we are here today. That's fantastic. And that's why we're so excited to see it making its way to the United States with the help of Dr. Jagaris and yourself. 
Um, so we're going to move into now some questions for you, Dr. Chigares. Okay. So in this procedure, as compared to the traditional uh, mastectomy procedure, what is included in this robotic nipple sparing mastectomy procedure? And in addition, what benefits do you see directly for the patient? All right, well, with the robotic nipple sparing mastectomy, uh, it is very similar to an open traditional nipple areolar and skin sparing mastectomy. Um, the difference is that the incision is placed very laterally on the side um, and not on the breast tissue at all. In the past, when we performed nipple sparing mastectomies, the incisions would be on the breast itself, uh, sometimes around the nipple and areola, uh, sometimes trying to hide it more on the underside of the breast, but nonetheless always on the breast. This new robotic approach is going to allow us to perform a nipple sparing mastectomy with no scar on the breast at all. So we're really using the robot as an extension of my own hands to be able to reach through a smaller opening and not have to make such a large incision right on the breast. This then allows the patient to wake up with no further breast tissue or the most minimal possible uh, with the implant in place and no scarring on the breast. This should help with the psychosocial sides of scarring and allow patients to be able to accept the procedure and move on in a more positive manner. So with those many advantages for patients, why do we not see this procedure currently widespread across the United States? Uh, the main reason is that in order to perform the procedure, one has to be both certified to perform breast surgery in the way of mastectomies, but also be certified in robotic surgery. Here in the United States, many robotic surgeons are, do not perform breast surgery. Many breast surgeons are not robotic certified. And in your case, you have both of those In my case, yes. I've been performing robotics for the last five years since it's begun in the field of general surgery and breast surgery in the way of mastectomies and lumpectomies for 23 years since I started practice. And so as you look forward to performing this procedure here in the United States, what steps are you taking to optimize the success of the procedure with these patients? Well, to begin with, we are inviting Dr. Toesca to come from Italy to come here to the United States and observe and be able to give suggestions as he has performed over 90 of these procedures already. Uh, this will ensure that our procedure mimics his procedure and the successes that he has had. It's fantastic. And as we move towards that end of expanding the procedure, we also keep in mind who is an ideal uh, candidate for the procedure. So who would you say um, would best fit this procedure? And if they were interested in receiving this procedure, how would they go about contacting you, taking steps uh, to move forward to receive this procedure? With respect to the appropriate candidates, there are a number of different candidates who would be very perfect patients for this procedure. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we are excited to see the progress with this procedure as you uh, continue to make it hopefully widespread across the entire United States. So thank you so much.